Why does every single successful YouTuber have a studio space and then make a video about said space? I've been fascinated with this idea of needing dedicated creative room. I know that in the traditional film world, you film on a soundstage and not in the director's bedroom. If you're in theater, you ideally have a rehearsal room and you aren't singing in the shower. Okay, you're probably still singing in the shower. But with YouTube, pretty much every successful YouTuber started out filming in their bedroom or in a room not dedicated solely for creative use. And I think that sometimes when folks view these videos, they can get discouraged by thinking, well, I don't have camera X or microphone B or studio space Q, so I can't make these videos. I've thought that myself. It kind of begs the question, why is this really necessary? And what's the nexus for getting your own studio space? Money, but there has to be something else, right? If, if everything's connected, you just kind of feel like you're always at work. It's, it's hard to, when it's right there, you feel like you can always be jumping right back to your job. Whereas just having that slight separation of going like, that room is just for work or just for X, Y, or Z. That's why you go in that room. That keeps that separation enough that you can just, you know, uh, have a life, I guess, or at least feel that way. <laughs> That was a clip from my friend Sean of the YouTube and Twitch channel, Sean Zom Gaming. I first met Sean in Boston at my first job out of college and I helped him with some of his earlier video work. He's now an accomplished streamer and creator due to his hilarious wit, voracious work ethic, and staunch consistency. He has persisted creating content that didn't always resonate with his audience at first until eventually finding his groove. It's been an honor helping him in the small ways that I have, but his success is certainly due to his own merit. And in those early days, Sean used to create in a room dedicated to multi-purpose use, just like I do now. I wanted to get his thoughts on the matter because I'm curious why, as creatives, we need specific innovative spaces. Is it truly a need, or is it an elevated want? So I create in my childhood bedroom, of which I'll give you a tour shortly. It's a space that I'm extremely grateful for, and in addition to that, it can be a difficult space to work in. When my parents are home, I can easily get distracted by what's going on in the other room. In fact, even when I'm by myself, I can get distracted because I've got so many games and toys that are very easily within my reach. I'm hoping that eventually I will get a space with more room to create, but I'm grateful for the space that I have right now. I'm making the best of it. There are some positives, there are some negatives, and there's some stuff that can be annoying, but I'm able to get over. So let me give you a tour. So I lived in this room from about one years old to 18 years old, then briefly again at age 21, and now from age 25 onward. I don't have plans to live here longer than one year after the creation of this video. My room has gone through multiple changes. In fact, I think that even one of the first videos that I ever put on this channel is me rearranging my room. First, let's start with the pros. Everything is within reach within my room. And all of the stuff that I'm interested in is in here. And most importantly, this room is custom by me. Now, let's go with the cons. It's not a huge space. I definitely have enough room to do what I need to do here, but if I wanna get a little more ambitious with the scope of my projects, I need more space. It's also not entirely mine. Like I said, this is my parents' house, it's the room that I grew up in, and I'm not gonna be here for longer than a year. And the last con is there's not enough division between categories. I even have Steam on the computer that I'm working on right now, and City Skylines is just a couple clicks away. So let me give you a tour kind of category by category. First, there's the YouTube desk. I spend most of my time here. I got a 2019 iMac at the end of last year, and I absolutely love it. I'll put the specs on the screen, and of course, links to everything that I really talk about are always going to be in the description if you want to purchase them. And hey, they're Amazon affiliate links. If you purchase through those links, it really helps me out. So this actually used to be my closet. Now I'm fortunate enough that I can store my clothes in a separate room. You might recognize this room from previous videos where I pretend to be asleep. That's not actually where I sleep. 
Spoiler. But I really like this space. I've got my wall of cables. That's just a repurposed shoe organizer. I've got my boxes of stuff. And of course, who could live without a standing desk? The pros of this space. Very, very fast machine. I can pretty much do everything that I want. There's also plenty of storage slash monitor space. I don't know how anyone could go without at least one extra monitor. And also it's configured to my specifications. Everything I need is right here. Now let's go with the cons. There's no separation of pleasure and work. Everything is on one machine. I can very easily access YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, all those different goodies from the same machine that I do my work on. I can get distracted very easily. Now the next con is my storage solution is decent, but it could definitely be improved. I'm currently using a combination of multiple hard drives with Backblaze, and then hopefully eventually Backblaze will have backed up those hard drives. It's been taking a long time. And last, my cable management and miscellaneous storage is not super organized. There's no rhyme or reason to the way that the cables are organized on my wall, and these boxes up here are not categorized either. Next, let's look at the gearbox. So this gearbox actually used to be my old dresser that I restored. It ended up taking me a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm very, very happy with how it looks. It stores everything that I would need for a video shoot. Let's start with the pros. There's plenty of space and it's versatile. I put a hole in the back of it and connected a power strip into the wall so I can charge everything within one place. It's pretty nifty. And the last pro is that, like I said, it's really pretty. I worked hard on restoring this and getting it back to its original look. I think I did an okay job. All right, let's go with the cons. It's very heavy. And to go with the second con, the wheels could move better, especially if it wasn't on carpet. I think I probably could have chosen better wheels, but I wanted this dresser to maintain kind of the same height it was just as it was on the ground because the work surface is just at the perfect height for me. And the last con is the drawer slides are old fashioned and they're not very well supported when the drawer is fully extended. Next, let's check out the music desk. So this desk has served as an old desk of mine before and I believe it's kind of been in the family for a little while. It has the ability to record music or listen to Spotify through these crazy good speakers. Speaking of, let's go with the pros. The sound is absolutely stellar. I typically like to write music without headphones and listening to music, like I said, it's pretty great. Next, it's also a cool configuration for what it is. I was able to fit a lot on this desk and I think separating this from my YouTube desk has proved to be very helpful. Last, it has all the instruments I could need. The keyboard is great for doing keyboard stuff and MIDI drums, but I've also got a bass, a guitar. What else could you need? Well, let's go with the cons. It's very easily cluttered. Every once in a while, I'll be missing something and then realize, oh, it's on my desk. Next, this is my old laptop and it can struggle to record sometimes, even though that's the only thing that it's used for. The last con involves the next section that we're gonna talk about, and that's the video game area. There's not enough division between the two things. Now let's go over to the couch. We've had this couch for years, it's kind of, gone in and out of style as the years have gone on, and I've got this little storage thing behind it. Let's start with the pros. It's comfy. I can sit here and play for hours. Second, it's very easy to disconnect from the world and sit down and play. Last, I can actually watch and play at the same time. So let's go to the cons. It's a little bit far from the wall just because of the TV size and where the couch is. This is one of those things where I can easily move the couch back and forth, but I'd like to avoid that. Next, the platform behind the couch can get cluttered pretty easily. This is the same as the con of the music desk. And speaking of the music desk, that's the con for this one too, is that it's a little bit too combined with my music area. While it's great to have a multi-purpose TV, I think that it can sometimes get a little bit too mixed up with other things. Because the computer has access to the internet, I can easily get distracted on the internet. And because the TV is connected to the Xbox and the Switch, you get where I'm going with this. And last, let's go with the bed. So I haven't always slept in this bed when I've been in this room. This actually was built when I was in high school. And my dad and I built the platform bed for the very reason of there not being a lot of space in this room. Having the bed up here has been super helpful for me to create videos, as you can see with this setup. So let's start with the pros. The bed is super comfy. It's a memory foam mattress and it's lasted a long time. Next, I can actually turn off my lights with Alexa. That's always handy so I can just kind of plop into bed and not worry about turning out the lights. And last, this area is separated from the rest of the room more than other areas. And the cons. 
cons. It can get really warm easily. I kind of have to have this fan running even in the dead of winter. Next, it's great to have the division, but it's still in the same space as everything else. I'd love to be able to end a day and to plop down into a different room in a different space. And the last thing is something that I get questions about all the time. No, this is not a stripper pole. In fact, this pole gets in the way more often than not. It kind of adds to the difficulty of separation between areas because no matter where I turn the camera, the pole is pretty much always there. I really love this room. It has its faults for sure, but it's versatile and it allows me to do a bunch of different things that I'm into. If I could pick this room up and put it into my own apartment, I think that that would be ideal. I asked the question on Twitter about needing a specific space or room to work on your craft, and I got into an interesting conversation with this creator. I talked with someone who is a large-scale painter, and this person does not have the luxury of converting their room into a workspace as well. I recognize that it's a challenge for creatives to have a dedicated workspace. Sometimes we have to do the best with what we've got at our disposal. I'm looking forward to having more dedicated space for creating in the future. It's an exciting prospect and I get that it's not just a fuel to ego that wants an impressive studio space. My recommendation for those of you looking to get a creative space at home is try and create some sort of division. Of course, if you have an extra room that you can use or a garage, that's always gonna be helpful. But if you're in a bedroom like I am, see if you can do something like separate your bed from your desk and make it feel like two different spaces or multiple different spaces. It's not a perfect solution, but it's a start towards something. Having a dedicated workspace is important if you really wanna get stuff done. Being separated to really focus on what you're trying to do and not having interruptions or having things that can distract you, I think is extremely important, which is why I think it's, you know, I mean, they give the higher ups all these, their offices, you know, the corner offices. <laughs> I think everybody should have an office, you know, just kind of like so that you can have your space where you get your stuff done. Please go support Sean on Twitch and YouTube. Additionally, I'm doing more behind the scenes looks as well as deeper insights into the Slacker Stuff channel over on my Patreon. For $5 a month, you can learn about how I created these videos, as well as insight into upcoming projects and life as a freelancer. You can find that at patreon.com slash slacker stuff. And if that's too much to ask for, then please consider subscribing. If you're watching this on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, head over to my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. It helps the growth of my channel immensely. And with that, I will see you next time.